Hello, electronics enthusiasts and ham radio operators the world around. I'm Dave Kassler, MT Radio Call Sign KE0OG, and I'm here with another episode of Ask Dave. This one is from John Merrill, KC5DBX. He is trying to connect an SDR radio and his transceiver so that when receiving, the antenna connects to the SDR, and when transmitting, it cuts that off so you don't ruin the SDR. Now, there are devices for this. Now, MFJ is not with us anymore, but this is an example of one of the devices. This is an MFJ 1708 SDR. And what it has in here, you connect your antenna here, you connect your radio here, you connect your software-defined radio here, and you connect with a phono plug on the back of your radio it's got something that says push to talk. Now what that does is it tells an amplifier I'm ready to transmit. Well you actually hook it here instead and you have to connect 12 volts to this because what happens when you go to transmit a relay cuts off the SDR. Now note that this provides about 40 dB of isolation. That's really not enough but a lot of the SDRs can withstand something that's down that far. So if you're transmitting at 100 watts, okay, 1 watt is 30 dB, 10 watts is 40 dB, 100 watts is 50 dBm, dBm. And then you take about 20 dB off of that, you're still allowing a fair amount of power to go into your SDR. Now some of these are made a little differently. So there's better attenuation. I would call DX Engineering in their Talmadge office and see what they have available for you that can help with that kind of thing. That way, if you've got an older radio that just has a dial on it, you can use the waterfall from the SDR as a waterfall for your radio without having to buy a whole new radio. Nowadays, they all come with waterfalls. Some have taken that to new New heights, there's actually the part that wiggles up and down at the top is the spectrum scope, and then the waterfall is the part down underneath where you see the signals as they get older and so on. This is an Alpha Delta Lightning arrestor right here. Okay, you attach this very securely and mechanically, no solder, like a hose clamp or something to ground, and then you connect to the antenna and into the house. It's one of the big three. You've got Alpha Delta, you've got Polyphaser, and you've got Morgan. Okay, and you can take any one of those. This particular one, it doesn't matter which way you go through it, but it does on the others, so you have to be careful. Now, he wanted to attach this to ground rod, and what he wanted to know was, is it okay to attach things to his ground rod when the utility ground is way at the under end of the house, somewhere in the garage, and he can't find it. Is that okay? The answer is no, it's not okay. However, don't tell anyone I told you this. An awful lot of people do it that way. I did it that way for years, okay, till I finally read the book. This is the source of best practices for amateur radio grounding. And this is Grounding and Bonding for the Radio Amateur by H. Ward Silver. And note it is the second edition. There's a lot of additional material in here that you need to know about. Now, there's all kinds of drawings and things like that. What you need to do, how lightning works, how your single point ground works, and things like that. All in there. This book is readily available from the American Radio Relay League. Now, if you happen to be an Amazon Prime member, you can get it on Amazon for maybe a dollar or two more, but you don't have to pay the postage. His question was about grounding. Now, he says he's a disabled veteran, so digging up my driveway or even digging under the sidewalk is just not possible for me. That's what neighborhood teenagers are for. Go find somebody who will cut the little path for your grounding wire. Now, a lot of landscaping companies have very nifty ways of getting pipes under sidewalks and under driveways. They do that for sprinkler and so on. But if you can get them to put up just a blank pipe, you know, like an inch around or something like that, you can run the wire through that and uh, take it around over to the other side. 
do not ever put a bonding wire anywhere in your house. Okay? Don't run it in the basement. Don't run it under the kitchen. Anything like that. Keep it outside the house. The idea is to keep the lightning outside of the house. Now, there are a couple of reasons for bonding. One, safety. Okay? When you have things bonded together, the whole house rises and falls if there's a nearby lightning strike. And it's not the voltage that kills things. It's the voltage difference that does it. Okay? So there's things that you do, including bonding, to make sure that things all stay together. In your shack, you're going to have a single point, like a piece of copper pipe or something, that you attach all your grounds to from all your equipment. And then there will be a number six wire or bigger. I use number two stranded for this. Uh, that will go down to your actual ground rod or your single point ground panel, which is where all your lightning arresters are. You want to keep the lightning out of the house. So safety is the number one thing that you need to consider. Second, I have found personally that having everything properly grounded really reduces RF noise. I put up an HF9V antenna out there and I ran the coax. It was grounded out at the antenna. I ran it in straight to the radio and Oh my goodness, the noise. Well, I just touched the uh, a coax connector on the thing to my ground and poof, the noise went away. One of the things about being well grounded is noise inside the house can't get into your radio. Any noise that's going to come into my station has to come in from outside. And in the case of my NFED half wave, it's 30 feet in the air. Okay. And horizontal. Wonderful antenna. I've got a step IR, big IR antenna with lots of uh, uh, radials, about 30 radials. And uh, it's also grounded with a ground rod. And there's some other wires run under the ground. Extremely well grounded. Very low noise antenna because it's far away from things that make noise. And it works very well. So that's the second reason for doing it, is to reduce that RF noise. can really help you with that. Do you have to have it? A radio will work without it. But I wouldn't run a radio without it unless I'm in an RV or something like that. And then I would ground to the RV chassis, okay, and make it work like a counterpoise. There you have it, my ranting and raving on grounds. And so I know that, John, you've solved your problem years ago, literally. But there may be some of you out there still who are toying with how best to ground. I would get this book, read it. Go to your local club meeting, ask questions, and at a minimum, a lightning arrestor before the coax comes into the house. If you can, after the lightning arrestor, run the coax in the house. Sometimes you have to go up the wall to a second story shack or something like that. I've got a friend named Lou whose shack is on the second floor. And all of his several dipoles, he's got the wire coming down on the ground over to the ground rod where the lightning arrestor is and then up the side of the wall in so that he can protect himself from what happens down here. We get thunderstorms in the summer. It all takes us one strike. And I've already been hit. So the next strike is yours. Until we next meet, 73.